How big does your studio have to be? Not as big as you think. Now I know you want to hear about how I use my new studio to make over half a million dollars in sales, and I'm going to show you that. But what I want you to take away from this video is that you don't need a big elaborate space to make big income. Is this space pretty? Yep. But more than that, it's a money making machine. Let's check it out. I'm Megan DePiro, welcome to my world. I've been a successful portrait photographer in Southwest Florida for the last 10 years. Now up until last year I was working out of my home studio and you bet that when I was working from home I learned to maximize every inch. I had a converted master bedroom, seven foot tall ceilings, you name the limitation, I had it. Now despite all that I was able to hit $20,000 sales and $400,000 annual revenue so when it was time to move, I said, I got to use what I learned in this new space. So when I was first looking at studio space, my first thought was cost. We are business owners, right? You want to stay lean so that you can keep more money in your pocket. Now PPA Benchmarks is going to tell you that successful commercial studios tend to retain about 35% net. But guys, I don't want to make 35% net. I want to retain 50% net. And you don't keep 50% net when you're writing fat checks to your landlord, now do you? Now in my market, if you're looking at 2,500 square feet, you're looking at upwards of $5,000. And let me tell you, some of my friends in Naples, they're spending $9,000 a month. No thank you. So if you want a target for what you should be spending, let me give you my advice as your business coach and a veteran pro. Aim to keep your rent at 5% of your total projected revenue. Now our projected revenue this year is 500,000. So it stands to reason that 2,000 is a good rent for us. And here is what you get for the money. This is $2,000 a month and 757 square feet. After cross, my next big concern was layout. My favorite configuration is this long rectangle, what I call a bowling lane. So this allows me to shoot different vignettes along the length of the studio. The way my pricing is set up, I make more money when my clients want more images. Therefore, I focus on getting my clients a lot of variety. Now I painted these walls these different colors so that I can get all these different looks. Not having V flats was really part of our mission too because everything is built into the walls. And we've selected strategic colors for the walls. Gray is just an awesome color. It looks great with a lot of different skin tones. And I love the blue for folks who have blue eyes. It's also a nice modern fashion color. And last, the black is fantastic for just a pop, something more dramatic. And we love to do a kicker light around the client just to create even more contrast and drama. We also had a contractor make these T-walls so we could have structure for my favorite pose, the wall lean. So we loved this couch so much from the other studio that we decided we had to bring it here to the new studio and prioritize its placement. Our clients love this shot. You can do headshots, beauty portraits, even intimate portraits. They all look great. Did somebody say lifestyle? We also love this look. This shot was done in the dressing room. Now in a small studio, you have to use every nook and cranny, so everything here does double duty. Everything in the dressing room was set up for comfort. So this is the one place in the studio that has carpeted floors, which is great for bare feet. We also have a comfy ottoman for seating, but guess what, that does double duty also, and we use that as a posing prop in the studio. Now what is conspicuously missing here? One thing is a door, the second is a full length mirror. We don't want our clients obsessing over details. Now if you are going to do a mirror, make sure that that mirror has beautiful lighting because you want your clients to feel pretty and flattering before they move on and get going with the shoot. While we're here, let's talk about wall art. This portrait behind me, this is me. This is from a beauty portrait shoot that I did. And I think it's really important to feature your own art in your studio. This allows you the opportunity to show your client you've been in their shoes. A couple of things I wanna point out to you about wall art. Above all, make sure you're using art as art. Decorate to scale just like you would in a home. Next, let your art show your client what's possible. You'll notice we are using different print media throughout the studio. Metal, frame prints, deckled prints, and fine art paintings. And finally, always frame. Framing your art gives it an elevated look and it separates you from the competition and from what's available to the consumer. 
Welcome to our makeup area. There is a strategy behind the way I use every space in the studio. So as you can see, while the client's getting her hair and makeup done, she is right within eye line of our new premier product. This is our fine art painted line. And shown here is my right hand gal, Jessie and her family. Now we love having this right near the client because it also allows us the opportunity to talk about different genres, family portraits, also different locations. Let's shoot at the beach. It's a great point of conversation and we love featuring this artwork here. All right, so here we have my favorite light source. Yes, it's the giant 4x6 Pro Photo Softbox. Now, natural light shooters, I don't want you to be afraid because trust me, when I started, I was only shooting natural light in my home studio. And when I came here, I was like, ah, studio lights. But what did I do? All you gotta do when you're thinking about your softbox is just think of it as a window. So a lot of times I like to position it like this, and this is the same thing that would happen with my north facing window. So the lighting is so simple, have no fear. We've got softbox camera left. We've got reflector camera right. Done, beautiful light. Other small studio considerations, floor space is at a premium, and the last thing I want is for my clients to be tripping on cords. So you'll notice that all of my stands have a small footprint. They're all on rollers so that they stay nice and compact and easy to move about. And because I'm on pro photos, I don't have to worry about wires or cords. Check this out. I totally geek out having motorized backdrops. The power is in my hand. On the ceiling, we have four main colors. White is by far our most popular. It creates tons of saleable images. It works for any genre, and thanks to the seamless sweep, it can work full length, seated, or three quarter length. Oh yeah, and if you want to get even more versatility, put your background colors to good use. Here's a look at Fashion Gray, our beautiful soft cream called Bone, and for the adventurous client, we have Color Pops. Now one more quick tip for my headshot photographers out there. We love the versatility of shooting extractions for large offices. So what I'd recommend is get yourself a sturdy studio stand like this. This is where I really put the length of the studio to the test. We know that this distance and this marking is perfect for three quarter length shots, and this distance and this marking is perfect for full length. As new team members come in, we get consistent results and help the office create new composites that grow as their team grows. I can't emphasize this enough, my studio is designed to sell. Once the client has this team formula built with us, who do you think they're gonna come back to month after month, year after year? Us, of course, and you can do the same in your small studio. Now, what about props? That's a good question. Now, it's really important in a small studio that you be a minimalist. I know some of you are tempted to get carried away. You really don't need a room full of chairs or a rack full of dresses to sell a lot of images. Here in this studio, we only keep precisely what we can store and everything has to be out of the way. Now as for this table right here, this was purchased as much for looks as for storage capability. Everything has to fit precisely beneath it. Same here and same here. Now as for larger pieces like desks and armchairs, there are no one trick ponies allowed in this studio. Seats like this are used for guests and they're also used for posing. Quick tip, prioritize pieces to be harmonious with your backdrop colors so that they blend away and your subject pops. We're almost done, but before I let you go, let me give you one more idea to consider. Keep your eyes open. Don't be afraid to look outside your doors. Here are a couple shots taken in the hallway next to my studio and also on the exterior grounds. These scenes inspire the heck out of me and once again create ever more saleable variety that clients can't resist. So to recap, here are key takeaways that'll help you make maximum profit in your small space. Aim to keep rent at 5%. Lower your overhead to keep more profit in your pocket. Be intentional with your space. Every piece of furniture should do double duty. Your walls and your backdrops should all help you create more saleable variety. Display wall art with an eye towards increasing your sales. Deliberately select pieces that will help you start a conversation with your client. Show it to sell it. And lastly, don't let limited space limit your creativity. By designing your small studio right, you should have endless possibilities for you and your client. Thanks for joining me. Ask your questions below and I'll see you in Rise to the Top.